Thank you very much for inviting me for this presentation. It's a pleasure to deliver this presentation. So let's start. I'll be talking about SQL Server 2022. We are very close to the release of the RTM version. And I'll be talking about the intelligent query processing, the new features related to intelligent query processing of SQL Server 2022. So our agenda today, we try to understand a bit about the past, past features that affect the new features. We'll talk about query store hints, parameter sensitive plan optimization, dot feedback, and CE feedback. And as Carl Sagan says, you have to know the past to understand the present. The current features may, may be so complex in some way that we need to understand where they come from, from the past. How it was before 2016. Before 2016, we had the stock, the query plan cache. Only the current queries in the cache were available in the cache. Current, I mean, they are usually being executed in the server. If a query is very old in the cache, it will be evicted from the cache. I will start completely clear of the cache. And this kind of, let's say, problem, it, make, it, it was used to make very difficult to analyze the history of the database. Everyone had to have its own method to keep a history about the database. Because what would happen if a user asks us, well, my query was working very well and suddenly it got slow. Well, we don't have a history about that unless we are collecting it somewhere else. So no history. That's what we had before 2016. In 2016, SQL Server 2016 brought Query Store. Query Store stores a history of queries and plans executed inside each database. We can enable Query Store on database level and restore this history, queries and plan history. So Query Store is capable to analyze this history. Analyze. At, at that date, Query Store was capable to hold the data and we could identify what is what is started to be called a query plan regression. A query plan regression is when a query is recompiled and the new plan of that query becomes worse than the old plan. And query store brought this capability to SQL Server. It became easier to build baselines in relation to how our database was behaving. We can identify parameter sniffing, but at that at that this point, you could not solve it yet. What is parameter sniffing? Parameter sniffing is when we are making a query filtering by one column, and the data on that column is very skewed. In a way that if that query filters by one value in the column, the plan should be one. If that same query filters by a different value on that column, the best plan would be a different one. This is a kind of problem we call parameter sniffing. And in 2016, Query Store helped us to identify it, but not to solve it. Then in 2017, the query plan cache was immutable until 2017. In SQL Server 2017, a new set of features called Adaptive Query Processing became available. These features were capable to analyze the history of our queries and change a plan in the query plan cache. The query plan cache was mutable. And this, the first time it became possible to change a query in the query plan cache was in 2017. And this is very important for today. And the first feedback was created. What is a feedback? It's an analysis that SQL Server make over the process of executing a query, over the query plans, historical query plans in the cache, to decide about a possible change to make on these query plans in the cache. The first feedback was called memory grant feedback. The SQL Server became capable to identify when a query was using too much memory or not enough memory for that query plan. When this happened, especially when that query is not using enough memory for the query plan, it would create what was called a sort spill or a hash join spill, for example. Uh, the data would, ne would need to be saved in TempDB. The query would be very slow. And 
In SQL Server 2017, it became possible to solve this automatically. The memory grant feedback was capable of trying to identify and change inside the cache the amount of memory that that query would use. Parameter sniffing has partial solutions. Some of the problems which usually are caused by parameter sniffing, like spills to TMTB, like uh, problems with joints, uh, wrong type of joints, we started to have some kind of solution in 2017, but it was not enough yet. And all the new features were very focused on batch mode. This was the first time that we saw in SQL Server features which were only focused in batch mode and not in low mode. So what, what is that features focus in batch mode? I will explain a bit more. But just to mention, another feature which started in 2017 was plan forcing recommendations. In fact, this feature is, it could be a clue for us where we were going in the future. What is this plan forcing recommendations? Based on the history that query store was providing to us, SQL Server started to give us recommendations. Oh, according to the history, you should force this old plan for this query because this query is suffering about, uh, uh, with query plan regression. So SQL Server started to give us recommendations based on query store history. And this was just the beginning. But let's talk about batch mode to leave it clear. This difference in relation to storage and processing started in 2012, so way before this year. We started to have the batch mode in 2012 because the column store indexes were created in SQL Server 2012. In SQL Server 2012, we got this new index. The storage made by this new index is completely different. New, new at the time, of course, was completely different. So the processing mode became different as well. And this is a better processing mode for analytical processing, while the raw mode is better for production processing. The raw mode is the processing that we have over our regular storage, which is called low store. What is row store? It's the regular history that most of you may know using clustered index and non-clustered index. The clustered index establishes the usage of row store. So that table is using row store. In 2017, the new features created in SQL Server 2017 were focusing only in batch mode. They were not prepared for row mode and row store. This was a problem for SQL Server 2017 at that date. Then it came SQL Server 2019. The features for the intelligent query processing became way bigger. The amount of features that intelligent query processing had were way bigger. In fact, the SQL Server 2019 was the first time that you heard about intelligent query processing. Before it was the adaptive query processing, but SQL Server 2019 got so many features that they changed the name. The original name was had no, not, was not meaningful, so meaningful at that time. So we got a fancy new name, Intelligent Query Process, in 2019. Batch mode, mode is not a limitation anymore, on 2019. Why? Because we got the memory grant feedback overall mode, for example. One of the feedbacks that we had, the memory grant feedback was capable to work on row mode. What about the other ones? The other ones? For the other ones, we got a new feature called batch mode over row store. We didn't need anymore to use column store index to have the batch mode processing because we got in SQL Server 2019, the batch mode over row store to allow these features prepare for batch mode to work over the row store environment. Okay. Now that we reviewed all this history across SQL Server versions, let's talk about what's new in relation to this subject on SQL Server 2022. Query Store is enabled by default. SQL Server 2022 is the first version where Query Store is really enabled by default because on our previous version, Query Store was disabled by default. And many people became concerned about uh, some overhead that Query Store could cause. Well, and about this overhead, it 
depends a lot on the configurations, on the query store configurations. So query store now is enabled by the full on SQL Server 2022. And we have a feature called query store query hint. What is this? Well, how do you optimize some queries? When we have a very complex situation, beyond a trivial situation, we may would like to optimize some queries using query hints, specifying in more details how that query should run. The problem of using query hints is that these queries sometimes are sent by applications, and we don't have permission to change the application code, to put the query hint in the application code. How do we solve that? Now, in SQL Server 2022, we have query store query hints. What does this mean? Query store already have the history of the queries being executed in our environment. Now, it doesn't have only history. Now we can actively define how this query should run. We can add in query store a query hint and tell it, this query, when this query arrives in our server, we would like this query to be executed with this hint. So we can put a query hint inside query store, link it to one query. And when the application send that query to the SQL Server, the hint will be used to get that query. So we can uh, make a turning in a query without touching the source code of the application, without any touch on the source code of the application. And feedbacks now are persistent. I talked about the memory going feedback before, but the memory going feedback was a feature capable to change a query plan in the cache, in the query plan cache in SQL Server. What happens with the query plan cache when we restart the server? When we restart the server, we lose the query plan cache. And sometimes maybe it's something that we don't recommend anyone to do in production, but someone could clear the query plan cache. You would lose any memory grant feedback. On SQL Server 2022, the feedbacks, they are persisted. Where these feedbacks are persisted? Inside query store. So query store is evolving to not be only a history of queries anymore. It's evolving to become an active part of the query processing system inside SQL Server. And the query processor workflow changed. This means that the query processor checks query store about this information. The query processor needs to check query store. Is there any hint applied to this query? Is there any feedback applied to this query? And change the workflow of the query processing according to the information is stored in the query store. So the query store in SQL Server 2022 is not only a history anymore. It's an active part of the query processing system. And I said feedbacks in plural, what this means. Feedbacks are all around. It's not only about memory going feedback. We have lots of new kinds of feedbacks that our queries can receive. SQL Server can be analyzing our queries dynamically and identify that some changes to our query would improve the performance of our query. So, and, and in this case, SQL Server will apply feedbacks to our query and will store these feedbacks in the query store. And parameter sniffing is finally solved. In SQL Server 2022, we have a feature called parameter sensitive plan optimization. Putting together the parameter sensitive plan optimization, which I will illustrate, and the previous features from SQL Server 2017, for example, SQL Server 2017, for example, parameter sniffing can be considered solved. I couldn't say completely uh, solved, but the amount of situations where you will get problems from parameter sniffing are way smaller. So let's first talk about query store hints. So the idea about query store hints is that we can apply a hint in a query in query store. We can adjust the query performance with no code change, will not affect the code from the source application. The hint is persisted inside query store. And query processor will honor the hint. This is important. This means that the 
query processor workflow, change it. Now the query processor needs to go to query store to check the hints. And we can use query store data to follow up the results. When we decide to apply a hint, the query store continues to store the history of our query executions. And we can use this history to check if our hint application improved the query or made the query worse. So we have a good history, a good baseline to check this information. So I have here a uh, single server 2022 query hints. I have many databases for different examples. The query hints, I use the Adventure Works 2019 to illustrate the usage of the query hints. Okay. There is already a store procedure here, created here, a store procedure called filter press. It makes a filtering a query, filtering by list press. Okay, filtering by list press doesn't make much sense, but it's a way to illustrate how the data was skewed. I created an index as part of the demonstration, and they can execute this query here. Let me increase, and they can execute this query here to illustrate that some values have a huge amount of rows. The biggest one is the price zero, which has 10,000 rows with price zero. These products are free. While I have only 50 rows with the price of 404.99, only 50. So this kind of skewed distribution of the data makes the execution of the query need a different plan. Let me check this 121. This 121 is someone in the middle. For 121 and 49, 50, 50 records. So what happens? I'm executing here. I'm showing the execution here using this recompile. And in this case, I'll show the real execution plan, which this execution will use. So with the smallest amount of records, an index seeking key lookup was good enough for this way. A simple index seeking key lookup was good enough. That's interesting. When the amount of records is small, a key lookup is okay. It's not perfect, but it's okay because it's a, amount, a small amount of records. But if the amount of records is too big, the key lookup can't be used. And it's the presence of the key lookup that makes the uh, query processor to decide to use a clustered index scan. So see, it's the absolutely same query. But if I use one value, the best plan for this query is one. If I use another value, the best plan for this query is a different one. Let me clear the cache. And this illustrates as well the parameter sniffing problem. Because what happens? If I start the execution from one of the values, this query plan will be saved in the query plan cache. This query plan is in the query plan cache. And the second value will execute using the plan in the cache because the different values are not being considered. It's a parameterized query. So as a consequence, the value zero will be executed with the worst query plan possible using the key lookup. That's the situation of the parameter is missing. Uh, we execute the query with one value we will execute the query with some value. This value stores the plane in the cache, and then we end up getting this plane for all the values in the terrible execution. Uh, I cleared the cache. I cleared the cache. Let's locate this query inside the cache. I can query the DMVs from query store inside the cache. No, sorry, inside query store. The cache is cleared. Uh, but inside query store, this query is there. Query store has the history of our query. So this query is there. And this query has the ID sati inside query store. Sati is the ID of this query. Uh, so I put here ID key ID sati, and I'm creating a query store hint. 
I'm defining quiz.hint to use the option where compile hint together this query. The hint is created. We can check the creation of this hint using uh, select, select star from uh, sys query store query hints. Here it is. A, a new DMV to hold the hints we would like to apply to our queries. And see, I don't need to change the code of the source application. I don't need to. I put a hint on the query in query store, and as a result, what will happen? So first value is executed using a key lookup. Second value is executed using a cluster index scope. So for each value, we have the best plan possible because I applied an option recompile hint. Of course, we are not tired with only option recompile. Any hint you need to apply to on your queries to ensure that your queries will have the best performance possible, you can using the hint in query store. In fact, for the query hints, Microsoft followed the idea of cloud first. The query store query hints were available in Azure SQL database before SQL Server 2022. It may have six months, maybe, that Microsoft released this feature in Azure SQL database. So if you are using an Azure SQL database, this feature is available there as well. So these are the query store hints. Now let's talk about DOP feedback. What's DOP feedback? DOP is degree of parallelism. The degree of parallelism of a query. How many times you were asked to check the healthy of a SQL Server and discover that the max DOP configuration on server level was on the default, for example, on zero, using too many cores to process our parallel queries? And as a result, this creates a lot of weight, a lot of weight. If the server has a bad max stop configuration, you have a lot of weight. So what happens? Well, Microsoft spent years explaining to our DBA how to fix max stop. If the DBAs don't take action and don't fix max stop by themselves, Microsoft will do it by itself. SQL Server will do it by itself using the DOP feedback. So SQL Server is capable to use the query store history. Yeah, there it is, query store again. Uh, DOP feedback is based on the history of query store to identify that a query is not being efficient with the current DOP configuration. And then SQL Server will create what's called a DOP feedback. It will identify parallelism inefficiency. Inefficiency is based on CPU time, elapsed time, and the amount of weights we generate, not on any weight, weights related to parallel processing. And it will lower the max DOP. It will not increase the max DOP. It will lower the max DOP. That's the idea. So if the max DOP is not well configured, SQL Server will identify that the queries could perform better with a lower max DOP, and it will lower the max DOP automatically. We'll make evaluation cycles until we stabilize the query. It's not lowering the max DOP and leave it there. No, if you lower the max DOP, check the history of the results, did the CPU time improve it? Did the lapse of time improve it? Do we have a, a lower amount of weight? Then, if everything is perfectly fine and is stable with the lower value, it will consider this stabilizer. So it will stabilize the query in a lower max stop. The ceiling is always the max stop or max stop hint. Why the ceiling if I'm talking that it will only lower the max stop? In some situations, a re-evaluation could happen after a feedback was applied. 
Se que eu serve a major site, eu evaluei that and increase the max dot of a query that already has a feedback, a dot feedback. So it made the site to increase back the dot. It depends on the query store history. This feature depends on query store history. Sys query store plain feedbacks is a new TMV in query store which holds the query plain feedbacks. All the feedbacks are restored in this new DMV. It's revalidated when the cache is cleared. This is linked to what, what I said before. The feedbacks now, they are restored. They are persisted in the query store. So we can clear the cache and we don't lose the feedback. We clear the cache. The query arrives again. The query processor knows today how to check this DMV. This is the DMV. The query processor will be checking to see if a feedback is present. If the feedback is present, that feedback will be applied, will be applied to the query. In the case of the DOP feedback, when this happens, when the cache is cleared and the feedback is retrieved again from the query store, in this case, the feedback is revalidated to be sure that the feedback is still valid. So feedback is applied from query store after cleaning the cache. When you clear the cache, the feedback will be retrieved from query store. This feature can be enabled or disabled at a database level, and it can be monitored using extended events. Of course, you are all user to extended, extended events because you can have a profiler is deprecated by many years. So you have no problem by monitoring this feature using extended events. So you can see here, a new feedback is happening. A new query arrived to the server and the server decided that this new query is eligible to the DOP feedback. So what happens? First, the query is identified as an eligible query. And after this identification, the server will be analyzing the history of this query execution to check what can be made in relation to the feed, to this query. Uh, should the server provide a feedback for this query? In this example, this, these are the extended events captured when I was executing a huge workload on the server. The query in need of a feedback was in the middle of this workload. And it was being repeated, repeated, repeated all the time. And in a huge workload running all the time, what happened? There was a difference of eight minutes between the moment of the a query became eligible for the feedback and the moment when the feedback was really provided. So you can imagine from this the amount of executions that the server uses, the amount of history the server uses in relation to this query to decide that the server could provide a feedback for this query. After the feedback was provided, it starts a cycle of validations. So the query needs to be stable, stabilized with a better performance than it was before. Every execution of the query may trigger a validation event, and this validation event may result that the query is stable or not. So we have many validation events until the query becomes stable. So you see seven minutes difference be between the eligible event and the feedback provided event. Many validations until the query became stable, and the less validation is directly linked to the stabilized event. So you can see the very small difference between them uh, because they were generated together. The last validation resulted that the query is stable and this triggered the dot feedback stabilized event in extended event. What happened if you, we clear the cache? The feedback is gone from the cache, but it is on query store. So in this case, the eligible event doesn't happen. After the cache is cleared, the, query, the feedback needs to be retrieved from query store again. So the eligible event doesn't happen. Uh, it goes directly to feedback provided and the validation process. 
to ensure that this feedback is still valid and the query is still stable using this feedback. If you think of server doing all the work for the DBA, you think of server trying to steal our salary from us, as always, someone will tell this, will say this when new features arrive. But the work of the DBA uh, is not being lost. The work of the DBA is being shifted to other areas. For example, we can investigate extended events related to DOP feedback. If we have too many DOP feedbacks, it may mean that we have a very bad max DOP configuration on the server, and we may not be aware of that. The max DOP configuration may not be good for the server, the one that is on the server level, because we are getting too many DOP feedbacks. And in fact, this ends up delaying a bit the query processing. Too many DOP feedbacks on the minimum DOP, it may mean that you have a bad configuration for cost threshold for parallelism. Some queries that should not be parallel are going parallel but they should not. They could be better if they were not using parallel execution. So your cost threshold for parallelism may be bad in using a bad configuration. And we can identify these now using extended events from the behavior of the dog feedback in your environment. The dog feedback will never remove parallel execution. We'll lower the DOP to the minimum, which ends up being two two parallel threads, uh, but will not lower beyond that to one and remove parallelism. We'll never do that. That's a decision the DBA needs to do. Uh, if, uh, if all the DOP feedbacks are lower in the queries to two, oh, you have a bad configuration on the cost of the queries to go parallel. You could avoid some queries to even try to go parallel. Two main any queries on the maximum of the OP may mean the OP is too small. The value for the OP may be too small. So we'll have many queries on the maximum DOP value. And in this case, you may not get uh, many DOP feedbacks. Or if you get any DOP feedback, it may be reverted. Your DOP may be too small. Let's make an example. In fact, I can't really execute this example. The workload to cause a DOP feedback, for example, the simple workload I have here, it was a simple workload created by Bob Ward. Uh, it takes 20 minutes to run, more than 20 minutes to run. So I cannot really execute this, but I can show you some details. For example, the extended events capture after the workload were executed. I Triggered this workload half an hour before the session, uh, left it running, and now we can see the extended events triggered. So we exactly as I illustrated on the PowerPoint, eligible, provided, validation, and stabilized. Exactly as I illustrated on the PowerPoint. So eligible query. And here we see on the details, this query is running with query dop two, four. Could you drop four in the table here? Feedback provided, feedback dop. Let's put the feedback dop in the table as well. So it made a feedback that this query should run with two, not four. In fact, on the feedback provided, it took, how many minutes it took? 21 to 32, it took nine minutes to decide, to make a decision that it should not fall to three. It should go directly to two for the screen. And the best feedback that would be two. Then it triggered many validation events. Until on the last validation event, the feedback state became stable. When the feedback state became stable, we got the feedback stabilized event. So let me open a new query window here. This is on the database wide world importers. And here I can select them. Staff from C's query. 
store hint. Why I'm showing quick store hint? Well, a good guess would be that, oh, it's a dot feedback, it will create a hint inside quick store. It doesn't. It doesn't create a hint inside quick store. The dot feedback is stored inside quick store plan feedback and only inside quick store plan feedback. Who designed this feature? Who designed this feature decided that this would be the only place where the dot feedback is stored. Uh, so we can see here the dot feedback is stored here as a dot two, pointing to this quick plan. This plan, plan ID should run with DOP two. And we have even additional feedbacks. This huge workload that creates the DOP feedback also created two memory grant feedbacks to adjust memory usage on some queries. And the memory grant feedback became persisted inside query store. These feedbacks, they don't generate any query store hint. Uh, the explanation for the, the not generating query store hint is it was a design decision because they want they want to use our hint. If we decide to put a max dot hint in one query, our hint will be honored. And no feedback will go beyond that. Our hint or the server configuration will be the top dot for that query. The feedback is still can lower a query further than a hint that we use. Uh, we can put a max dot hint on a query and the feedback discovered that if the hint were smaller, it would be better. So the feedback is capable to lower the query even when the query has a hint, but not increasing, never increasing. Okay, so this is the DOP feedback. Now let's talk about parameter sensitive plan optimization. Oh, a complex name, parameter sensitive plan optimization, or PSP is how everyone is called. SQL Server 2022 PSP. What is this? It's the possibility to have multiple query plans for each query. The same Query, the absolutely same query can have multiple query plans in the Quick SQL Server query plan cache. We can have multiple query plans for the same query. How the PSP takes the decision based on query statistics. This is exactly built thinking about parameters different. If we have a, a column in, in our table and the queries are making predicates over that column, but the values on that column are very skewed. One value returns 10 records, another value returns 10,000 records. In this case, the PSP will take place and will create multiple query plans for the query, for a single query, the same query. It doesn't depend on query store. PSP can live without query store. It can, uh, but query store helps saving the history about PSP, but PSP can live without query store. So how does multiple query plans work? The PSP creates one query plan, which is called the dispatcher plan. When that query, that same query arrives in the server, the dispatcher plan will be triggered. The dispatcher plan will be triggered. Then a decision will be made about which variant plan will be executed for that query. So a dispatcher plan controls which query plan will be executed for the query. And the variants defined are defined by a range of returning rows. How many rows that query execution will return? So this means that when a query, before SQL Server 2022, when a query arrived to the server, if the query was in the query plan cache, is a cache hit, and that query plan would be executed. We already talked a lot about query store hints, feedbacks that would change the execution of this plan. 
And now we're talking about something even more, uh, only in the cash. The, the query is in the cash. It's a cash hit. But the plane is a dispatcher. If the plane is a dispatcher, then the query processor needs to check the histogram for the column and check to which variant this query should be sent, which variant plan should be used to execute this query. So the histogram will be checked by the query processor to check the variant which will be used. See, uh, this works for parameterized query, of course. If the query is not parameterized, there is no way for this to take place. A parameterized query arrives and we have a dispatcher plan. The dispatcher plan defines a range. For example, the dispatcher plan will define that their range is between 10K and 1 million. This is the range for the dispatcher plan. And this decision of the dispatcher plan range allows the dispatcher plan to be linked to three different query plans. One query plan for when the returning rows will be below the range, when query plan for when the returning rows will be in the range, and when query plan for when the returning rows will be above the range. So we have one query plan for each of these situations, below the range, in the range, and above the range. And the range is the same. The range is specified by the dispatcher. Okay, so let's see a demonstration about PSP. I'm sorry, I did a small mistake that you make this demonstration be slow because I should have triggered this immediately after the dot demonstration. And I didn't. This query is a bit slow. We have an example here. This example will run on the wide old importers too. I separated the different database of this example. Wide old importers too. We have a stop procedure with different parameters and with problems of parameter sniffing. So we will execute these two stop procedures. It will take some moments. The first is very fast. The second is a problem. It will take some moments to execute. And simple like that, by, by triggering these long executions, the PSP will note how this execution is skewed. We'll identify the need of the PSP. And as a consequence, it will generate the distributor and the variant query plans. All this is already happening. While it's executing, we can see here that I have some queries that will display for us the dispatcher in the variants. And we have a new query store DMV called Sys Query Store Query Variant. This DMV Sys Query Store Query Variant, it holds out the variant queries. So query store can identify the relation between dispatcher and variant queries. Let's check the query plan cache. We can already see this, these three queries inside the query plan cache. Inside this query plan cache, you can see these three queries. And you may notice it is the absolutely same query. And besides being the same query, we have here the configuration of PSP. The configuration of PSP appears as if it is a, a, a query hint. Plan per value, object, query variant, query variant one, query variant three. This means that we could still have a third query, query variant two. So, and the range is always the same. 
because the range belongs to the dispatcher, not to the variant. So the range, 100 to this very high value. Quick variant one is if the amount of records is below the lower limit. Quick variant three is if the amount of records is above the higher limit. In this case, it will execute key variant three. If it is in the middle, if the amount of records is in the middle, we don't have a query for, plan for that yet. It can be created at any moment, but we don't have a plan for that yet. How these plans are? They are the variants are regular query plans. For example, one is a lookup. The other one, the, the variant one is a lookup. The other one is a scan running in parallel. I scan running in parallel. And what is this here that I haven't mentioned too much? This is the dispatcher. This is the dispatcher. In the plan dispatcher, you find one only SQL element, which is multiple plans. This is identified that this is the query dispatcher, the plan dispatcher that will trigger one of the variants. One of the variants will be triggered by this dispatcher. Okay, the query is already executed. I can continue now on the same window. We can check this table, query store, query variant, and you see we have two variants here. Two variants. This is the query ID of the variants inside query store. Then they have a parent query ID. This is the query ID of the dispatcher. And they have a dispatcher plan ID. This is the plan ID of the dispatcher. The query ID of the dispatcher and the plan ID of the dispatcher. Let's look first on the variant queries, linking some, joining some queries to DMVs to get information about the variant queries. And on the variant queries, we can see here the query hint, the PSP query hint inside the query, inside the variant query. The dispatcher query, now let's take a look on the dispatcher query, which is a single query. The, on the dispatcher query, we find the original query without the query hint, the PSP query hint. And the dispatcher plan, we can also check the dispatcher plan in query store. Yeah, uh, multiple plan that will trigger one of the variants of the quiz. Is it? Parameter sniffing solved with this? Mostly. The amount of parameter sniffing problems that we get will be very reduced. But there is a limitation. For each parameter, we can get three variants. What if this par that parameter is more skewed than that? It may happen that inside one variant, we may still have a parameter sniffing problem. But the variant is very flexible. The variant is a full query plan. That query plan could contain, for example, an adaptive join from SQL Server 2017, which would help in solving the parameter sniffing problem. That's a possibility. So this is the PSP, parameter sensitive plan. So now let's talk about the last one. The last feedback is CE feedback. CE feedback, yes, what's this? Well, CE is the cardinality estimator, is the component of the SQL Server which create, defines our statistics, calculates using the statistics the amount of record which each query will return. When I first heard about CE feedback, this reminded me about SQL Server around 2012 or 2014, if I'm not mistaken. It was a time when the CE was upgraded. There was an upgrade on the cardinal estimator. And uh, sometimes we could use quick hints to decide to use the old cardinal estimator from the 
previous version of SQL Server and the new Cardinal estimator from the new version of SQL Server. This is immediately triggered with these memories from many years ago. Is that it? No, not at all. The point is, the Cardinal estimator makes many, many calculations in relation to our queries and the histogram to give us an amount of records that that query will return. And for these calculations, these techniques the Cardinal TC use to make these calculations, it makes some assumptions. What if these assumptions are wrong? That's what this e feedback point was. The initial assumption that, that the Cardinal estimator makes in relation to the quiz can be reverted. The Cardinal estimator itself can decide, no. Nope, this is not good. This, this didn't provide a good result. So I will use a different technique to make the estimation for this query. So the Cardinal estimator can decide to use a different technique for a query to estimate the amount of load in a query. So this is not about the CE itself. It's about the CE techniques used to estimate the amount of load that query will return. Feedback for three C techniques were implemented. Uh, are implemented in SQL Server 2022. Three techniques. Predicate independence versus predicate correlation. Joint containment assumptions, which are called simple or base. And low goal. So what are these assumptions to estimate the number of rows and execution of the query? Predicate independence versus correlation. We have a query with two predicates uh, linked with an end. Are the data on these fields independent, one independent to another, or are they correlated? In this exactly example, one has the ID of the province and the other has the city. They are correlated. But by default, the cardinal estimator uses the independence method. It makes the calculation of the estimates using the independence method by default. So for queries where the predicates are correlated, it will not give us a good result. So the C feedback can identify these automatically and provide the feedback a hint for the query to change this calculation. So the, the full behavior in this case is independence, and it can be changed. The other one, joint containment. What is this? There is a method called simple containment that considers that joint predicates are fully correlated. In this case, first estimate the filters, and after the filters, estimate the joints. Or base containment, there is no correlation between joint predicates. In this case, first estimated join and later estimated filters. There are a lot of calculations to explain these, these decisions, uh, but I'm not going into this detail, this level of details, but we have an example here of a query with a join. So, so. I end up not bringing a query with join containment example. But the point is the order, how this is defined. Also, the C feedback can change this order. Then the third one, logo. Logo is for queries which use top. The query has a top. What's the point? So apply to queries using top. Is scanning a few pages is an op. For example, top one. Top one for this query. Maybe it will read one page and get a record from there. So a simple scan of a few pages will be enough to solve this top one. It will be more than enough to solve this top one. Yeah, it may be. But if this query were more complex, with a where clause, for example, filtering, and the data where he skewed, it may be tries to scan a few pages and can't find on those few pages the records that fit on the filters, the amount of records required for the top and that fit on the filters. In this case, maybe a seat would be better to find the records which fit on the filters and with the top. So logo is the default behavior. Logo means let's make a scan of a few pages to get the top rows. 
but a feedback can disable this what is called low goal on the estimation. Let's see a demonstration of the cardinality estimator. So I will create, I'm creating here an extended event session to check the results of the cardinality estimator. Dropping and creating again, we have a specific feedback events for the cardinality estimator. So extended event sessions here. You see feedback is stopped. Let's start the session, see feedback session, and watch live data on the see feedback session. Okay. Then I'll clear the cache just to be sure that everything is okay. Quick store for this database, okay. Then I will execute this query 15 times. See what? Cardinal test meter feedback am I expecting? I'm talking about the independence or correlation of the parameters. I will, I will execute 15 times and one more. These numbers which trigger the cardinal test meter feedback may change. Don't key, don't hold on these numbers because they may change. Don't create any dependence with them. Then let's check what we have on the query store hints. I don't have a hint, but I may have something on the feedback. There it is. I have a C feedback, which is still pending validation. Okay. Let's execute one more time the same query and see the results. Now I have a hint. As a result of this e feedback, SQL Server decided to apply a hint. Assume mean selectivity for filter estimates. If you search about this hint on Microsoft website, you find that it's related exactly to this. It's changing what we talked in relation to the independence to partial or full correlation. It's changed the default behavior. And on the feedback, we can see here that the feedback was provided and the feedback passed the verification of the feedback. These are very huge changes. Huge changes like these sometimes, they bring some change in mindsets. For example, some shift related to mindsets. For example, query plan cache. What happens when we clear the cache? Well, we know we shouldn't clear the cache in production, but some people already make an argument in relation to this saying, is it so fair, Com compile the compilation for query, sometimes it's so fast that it doesn't affect production that much. Well, some people are starting to believe that, but now we have a shift on that because before, what happened? The queries are compiled, were compiled uh, using the usual compilation time. That's okay if the cache is clear. But now on SQL 2022, the drop feedbacks are dropped from the cache. So the query processor needs to revalidate our drop feedback. PSPs need to be regenerated. These are some examples of consequence of dropping the procedure cache. But more than that, now what about query store? Some years ago, some moments ago, query store contained the history of our queries. If that history was too big, taking too much space or something like that, we will go there and clear the history, clear the query store. This was before we lose history and we have a small lack of plan regression recognition by the SQL Server, but that's it. But what now in SQL Server 2022, if we clear the query store, we lose all the drop feedbacks, which will need to be reevaluated. We lose the memory grant feedbacks, which will need to be reevaluated. We lose the query store hint, uh, all the query store hints we apply it. So we lose a lot. So the point is there, there is some change of mindset happening in relation to the consequence of some 
simple administrative tasks like cleaning the quick store, for example. Some reference, a video about quick store, quick store, one article about quick store hints, and the Bob Watt intelligence query processing samples. In fact, there are more than intelligence query processing samples there, but the IKP samples are on this link in GitHub, all available. So these are very interesting links. So, anyone has any question? Any pending question? Anyone who would like to ask? I would say your summary of everything was very in depth because we actually have no questions from, from anyone. So I would say this is one of the clearest sessions we've had. Thank you very much for the session, Dennis, to say. Thank you very much.